And this is what they've done with it. Get a great view of the old station. And have a look at this bridge. They obviously built the bridge to accommodate any future double trap. Hello, thank you for joining me. We're at Hooton today. Hooton Station on the Mersey Rail network. Quite an interesting station with quite an interesting history. It originally opened in 1840 and it just had two platforms. It was on the line from Birkenhead to Chester. That way is looking towards Chester. That way is looking towards Birkenhead. In 1863, the line to Helsby via Ellesmere Port was added. That branches off just off up there. Uh, I did want to do a video on the latter half of that line from Ellesmere Port to Helsby, so if you want to see that, have a look at Lingle screen now. But what we've come to do today, see it says we're all country park, that's part of what we're doing. We're going to explore the old railway that used to turn off on this side, originally opened as a branch line to Parkgate, later extended to West Kirby. That was added in 1866. And behind here, there are more platforms, or should I say, work, the platforms are in existence, there's no track, there were more platforms. So what I thought we'll do, we'll walk along the railway, we'll have a look at the disused stations of that line. It's not overly clear, but if you just look through there, you can just see the remains of a waiting room. Hooton Station has changed a bit, it's got the modern footbridge with lifts. The original footbridge would have been here, connecting all the platforms. Now, all stopping passenger trains use these platforms here. Although those platforms are in existence and there's track, I've never actually known, seen a train go in or out of there because there's buffers beyond there. So unless it was running like a shuttle to, through to, say, Ellesmere Port, I don't think I've ever known them being passenger service. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find my way out the station, right round, up onto the bridge, and then we're going to go and explore the old line to Parkgate, known as the Wirral Way. So, we're now on the Wirral Way. Now, we are only a few feet away from where I was a moment ago. The station's over there. You can just see the station building. I've had to go all the way over the modern footbridge over there, round over the road bridge and down. But I'm currently standing on the platform and I can see a waiting shelter through the trees or an old waiting room. Here we are. You get a better look of it now. And um, it looks like it's all boarded up and we can't go in. But it's nice it's survived. It'd be nice if they could find a use for it but so this is the platform there's a palisade fence here i'm not sure what they use where the actual track would have been and then like i say the trains where we were are on the other side of those bushes so this is the old station you know brick and stone building you can see where there's a possibly supported a, a small station canopy perhaps over this part and um, this is where you'd have waited for a train if you were going around the wheel so the line originally only went as far as Parkgate, so that's what we're going to do in today's video. But it was later extended all the way around to West Kirby, so that, that's a video for another day. I just thought we'll explore this section, and um, it looks quite interesting. We're going to have a look at a couple of other stations on the way. So just here, the line would have curved off that way round. We're going to follow that line to the next station. So here we are now on the old track bed proper, curving away from Hooton Station. About here there was a little junction for an industrial line. Over there they're building a load of new houses. There would have been a factory there once, so there was just an industrial line going off. You know, industrial lines were fairly common serving various factories along the way. I'm going to now, as I say, continue. Let's go and find the next station. We're now probably about a mile, a mile and a half away from Hooton. I've been walking along the old railway. It's a very pleasant and enjoyable walk. As I mentioned, it opened in 1863, but then obviously it closed. It closed to passengers in 1956. It continued on for a bit for goods until 1962 and then closed completely. The track would have been lifted. But something slightly different happened. It became, in 1968, the Wirral Country Park. It's quite an unusual country park, and it's a long, linear country park. Often when you think of country parks, you think of a sort of a big area. Um, but look, we've got, there's a little loco, it says Wirral, Wirral Country Park and the Wirral Circular Trail, so that's what we're doing part of. But what happens to some of the stations? Well, on different disused railways, all kinds of different things have been known to happen. The station we're just walking on to now is um, Hadlow Road Station. So this is the first station after Hooton. 
And this is what they've done with it. They've even laid some track, restored the station, they've got a cafe, and they've really made a great job of restoration. So it's not like it's not been restored to become part of a heritage railway, it's just a nice country station restored for people to come and enjoy. And you can see there's people sat out there which is a bit having a cup of tea. It's about half past eleven, so yeah, perfect timing for a cup of tea. There's the signal box and the station. So what we'll do, we'll go round and we'll have a look. Let's go down here. So I'm currently on the platform at the moment. But if we walk down here, there we are, looking back towards Hooton, here's Hadlow Road signal box. Nice bit of track they've laid. Whether they ever get a carriage, I don't know. In a way, it kind of looks quite nice without any wagon. Sometimes I think having wagons or carriages adds to the atmosphere. I think here, it just sort of, it just looks nice that you can stand down here. So obviously there'd have been another track where I'm currently stood, but you can stand, you can look at the station. And um, like I say, it's people having tea and cake by the of it. I'm gonna go and join them in a minute. There's the station master's house. It looks as though we can probably go and have a look in there. The phone box on the platform, so we'll do that in a minute. It's a um, perfect place to have a break. As I say it's about half past 11 so it's it's 11 is time there's the milk churns which were once a feature of country branch lines there's a semaphore signal whether that would have always been in that position it is an unusual place to have one in the middle of the track but it's possible and then there's an old level crossing ahead of us when I've had my little break I'm going to continue down there as we look back get a great view of the old station Sort of imagine the fence isn't here. You could almost could almost be those people waiting for a train to come along. I think these these crossing gates they are replica crossing gates, but again a very good job. And then here we are, stood down on the track. Let's, uh, let's go up and have a look in the in the um, ticket office. And then, as I say, my plan is to get a cup of tea or a coffee. It just seems perfect. Now here we are. Look, I'm on the platform, complete with track, as if I'm waiting for a train. I think if trains running, people wouldn't be sat quite that close to the edge, but anyway, let's see what we can find in here. Nice thing all the old signs as well. So as if I'm going to buy a ticket, or I'll probably come from the other side, but anyway. This is the ticket office. Nicely restored. Let's nice look behind me. You have to buy your ticket there. Let's see. So it's all, um, all, all done out as a ticket office would have been. Complete with station master's cat lazily asleep on the chair. And I'm missing. So, yeah, and that's nice. And then I think in there, there's toilets, so that's handy if you're walking along the world way, you can stop here and use the facilities. So, soon I'll be continuing down there, but first, it's time I went and got myself a cup of tea. I got my coffee, sat by the stairs um, in what was possibly the lounge of the station master's house. Um, I deliberately sat in here because it's the quietest room for making videos, but the cafe is quite busy. So I'm going to enjoy this coffee and continue on. Interestingly, the station, although called Hadlow Road, actually serves the village of Willaston, and I can't find any reference anywhere as to where the term Hadlow comes from. The only place I can think of, it certainly can't be for it, is Hadlow Down down in Sussex, which is where the Tinkers Park Railway is, so it's definitely nothing to do with that. So if you don't know why the station's called Hadlow Road, uh, do please come and tell me. I'm going to have my coffee. Probably me three quarters of a mile on from Hadlow Road Station. I'm on this embankment. We're in a you know, fairly rural area of the world. People think of the world as being a quite a urban area, but the northern part of the world, up at Birkenhead, Wallasey, Hoy Lake, West Kirby, etc., is very urban. But this, this southern part of the world, it's very pleasant and rural. Oh, look at that. What a find. That is a gradient marker. So it's one in 425, and we've just got to the summit, and it's one in 73 down. So I'm going to be slightly descending. If a steam train was coming up here now, it would have been you know, really powering up, because one in 73 is quite steep for a steam locker, and then it would have you know, continued on down there. So that's, I'm really pleased. That's, that's made my day, finding that, that old concrete sign. It almost makes up for the fact that um, for some reason there's some work going on and we have to briefly, well, I hope it's briefly, I haven't actually checked, um, leave the path. It seems they're redoing a bridge, doing some work on the bridge. 
interestingly see there's a um, some steps for horse riding so they will be expected to get off we also went under a dual carriageway further back then there was another set of steps the horse riders love to get off and walk their horses over i suppose what this does give us an opportunity to do is go down there and see the bridge oh, this is interesting look so this is actually not a public footpath but it's permissive access it belongs to the university of liverpool i know some ios map we did pass the university campus so um it's not actually a public footpath but you know chances are I think if it's permissive, they close it one day a year, and it's usually Christmas Day. So we're, we're not, it's not proper for us. And we go down here. Oh, I see. I can see the reason why we couldn't cross the bridge. It's not there. The abutments are there. They've taken the bridge itself out. And uh, on a farm track, there's a tractor coming along. Um, so I'm going to get across it. Funny, it does warn you that tractors are coming. Um, luckily, the tractor's there, fairly slow. So I shall, I think, continue on up here and hopefully rejoin the railway again. We're now just coming on to the outskirts of Neston but we're in this really sort of deep cutting it's like a chasm there's a rhododendron growing out above us there and there seems to be a pipe along here and there's a you can just see that a raised manhole. It looks very old but um, unless the I'm not sure I can't see the train could have got past that or was has the track bed been lowered? I'm really not too sure about it. If you know, comment and tell me. But as you can see, the pipe continues down through this chasm. It's really quite a strange place. Still down in this deep cutting, and I think we are in the urban area now of Neston. There's people's gardens up there. I can hear someone mowing their lawn. This line, as far as I'm aware, was always single track. Now, interestingly, if we get to a bridge here, and have a look at this bridge. They obviously built the bridge to accommodate any future double track, but they never excavated the cutting to be sufficient width for double track. So a bit of a future proofing in that they have built the bridge as it is. I find that really quite interesting, but it's just such a strange place. It's sort of down, it's damp, it's wet, but I like it because it's different. So yeah, that is the bridge that was built for double track. And at the moment, and it probably never will see any trains ever passing it again on one or two tracks. I'm going to continue down here and um, let's go and find the old station at Neston. Well, this, I've got to the end of this really long cutting and I quite enjoyed walking through that. Now, the railway continues, would have continued along there. The path goes up here, there's a road up here and we're coming to Neston into the edge of Neston and up here we should find a site station. I don't think it's going to be quite as exciting as Hadlow Road was but we'll see what we can find. This isn't to be confused with the current Neston station on the Borderlands line. That came later. This was the first railway to serve Neston and then a few years down the line they opened the line. Um, it was opened in stages but that's probably a video for another day. We might see a train if we because we will go under where that railway would have been. So we get to here come out here you see we're all way country park etc the railway line would have continued on down there now there'd have been a bridge here it's been filled in and you can slight giveaway is in the houses that they dropped down so that's where the track would have come along as soon as i get across the road i'll show you the slightly more obvious clues to this housing estate's former purpose well probably the most obvious one is this station road so this road would have been here and this would have been the road you'd have driven down to the station but look at these houses or flats whatever they are the point is it's called station close and you can see it's interesting how because of the site of the old railway the you know where there's garages down there we'll see in a moment but the down there is like where the railway would have been and this is where they're filled in so that's where a bridge would have been it's been completely filled in and then the railway line would have gone along here. I think the station itself, the platforms would have been slightly further on. So I'm going to walk through this housing estate and then we should find the, the current railway that serves Neston. So having walked all along this housing estate, which I say is the site of the station, I've not seen any physical evidence of the station other than, you know, the names of the road. Also interestingly, but not really related, close to here is Hinderton Hall, a country house which the Great Western Hall class locomotive was named after and that locomotive is now preserved at Dickert Railway Centre. So I wonder if um, 
the loco I don't suppose it ever would have passed through here Great Western loco certainly went to Chester and up to Birkenhead whether they ever came through here or indeed over there I'm not sure so this is the Borderlands line so today's trains is usually Transport Wales class 197s and um, the X district line the D trains they also run on this line so that probably will be my way home later on I haven't decided which way I'm going to go it really will depend on what time a train comes and um, how it works for me to get back but that is the railway it's not the original um, bridge the, the abutments are probably original but they've rebuilt They've put a new bridge in at a later date. So I'm going to continue on. Let's go and find the next station and the final station of today's video, Parkgate. So as we continue on our final leg of the journey, um, I'm just notice, look, there's a fence there. From looking on the map, there must be a road going underneath and it's got very low parapets. So yeah, there is a road down there. And um, oh, look at that. That's a really nice, really nice, cute bridge. Quite a small bridge, wherever you can... I assume you can drive on if you want, I'm not sure, but nice old, you know, original bridge. And if we look out here, get quite a nice view across. Now those hills in the distance, they're in Wales. And oh yeah, the camera's doing that annoying thing. There you are, you saw them. And um, over there, I can just see the town of Flint on the other side of the water. Flint in Wales, I can see the tower blocks. I think Flint is the smallest town in Britain to have tower blocks, I once heard. Anyway. So that's the bridge. I'm going to continue on round here and we're going to go to and find Parkgate, the original terminus of this railway. Well, now I've um, broken off the path slightly. I'm still on the old railway. If you're sensible and just want to go along the path, you'd follow the path and you'd come into a, a car park. I'm going along this way, as I say, to follow the path of the old railway. And around here, this is the site of the original Parkgate station. It only lasted 20 years because for passengers that is because they extended the line as I've already mentioned up to West Kirby but it became the good station so you know it wasn't wasted so when we get to here passengers traveling most of the passengers travel on this line would have traveled across the road the road bridge seems to have gone and there'd have been another station on the other side of the road which um, I'm probably gonna leave till next time but as we go to here we're now see what I'm saying we've come to the car park so if you're walking the wheel away, it's come out over there, across the car park and down these steps, but the actual track there would have run along the back of the car park. So around here, this is probably where the goods yard was. Interestingly, a pillbox was later added, so that's a bit more history. So this is the site of Parkgate Station. I'll just show you where the railway would have continued. Or where, this is like the first station. The second station would have been over there somewhere. Like I say, that's a video for another day. I'm not sure when I'm gonna get around to doing it. It'll be when I've got some free time up here, but it's something I very much would like to do in the future to explore the rest of the railway all the way up to West Kirby. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And from the site of Parkgate Station, which closed well over a hundred years ago, please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment and goodbye.